Hey, what's up my travel buddies? It's getting winter in Europe right now, which means spring is starting in New Zealand. Two years ago, I made a video about how to travel around New Zealand on a budget. But now a friend of mine told me that I never talked about my highlights of New Zealand. So this is a video about my highlights. <laughs> I pulled out our travel diaries and went through all the places we've been to. So, but first of all, as you probably already did some research about New Zealand, New Zealand has two islands, the North and the South Island. If you plan your trip, it really depends on the time you got. Maybe the islands look small on the map, but they are bigger than we expected them. So you need some time if you don't want to spend all your time on the road. So there's a simple rule. If you don't have enough time, only focus on the South Island. And to summarize the whole experience of New Zealand, New Zealand is really about driving around, looking out for great spots and just stopping everywhere. Like if you see a great stop on the way, just stop, pull over, stop the car and just enjoy the view. Okay, but let's start. Probably you're going to start your trip in Christchurch. So Christchurch is a nice city. I've been there before the earthquake and after the earthquake. What I can tell you, before the earthquake, the city was quite nice. I really liked it. Now, they haven't even reconstructed this city properly. So there will be like a lot of construction work. Basically what people living in New Zealand told us, also called Kiwis, is that Christchurch feels like a donut city, which means this was the city, earthquake, boom, and the city center is still like quite destroyed and everything moves like outside of the city center. So basically we picked up our camper van in Christchurch. I made a whole list of camper van rentals, car rentals of New Zealand. In my other video, you can check out here, click on the description and you find all the links of all these car rentals. So we started in Christchurch and we drove north and our first stop was Kaikoura. On the way to Kaikoura, look out for the seal viewpoints. It's really great. You just pull over the car again and you will see a lot of seals chilling out on the rocks. The next highlight for us was Picton. In Picton you can do the Marlborough Sound cruise. So a boat takes you around the Marlborough Sounds and you can do the Queen Charlotte track. This is the track we did. So the boat takes you around the sounds, drops you and you just hike back. Another great great highlight of the South Island is the Abel Tasman National Park. You shouldn't miss out on that. You have like the ocean and you have this big national park next to to the ocean and you can do a tour where you rent a kayak and you go around the Abel National Park you kayak through the ocean you can see seals on the way and then you just drop the kayak somewhere in the National Park there are certain spots where you can drop the kayak and you hike back and you will see like golden beaches seriously the beaches are really nice we slept in Takaka which was a nice stop in between and from here you can go to the very very north of the South Island which is called Farewell Spit. Farewell Spit is nice because you have like long, long beaches, you have seals again, you can watch and you have these arches on the beach, but depending on the tide, there will be like in the water or not. And then on the way south, you drive on the west coast and then you drive further south to Franz Josef Glacier and Fox Glacier. And on the way to those two glaciers, you can stop at a place which is called Pancake Rocks. I also really like that place. I've been there twice. And if you go to the glaciers, you need to stop at a place before which is called Ocarito. It's like a small village and you can sleep over here before going to the glaciers. And Ocarito is just a great spot to hang out for for a night you have a really really great viewpoint there is a track where you're supposed to see some kiwis unfortunately we didn't see any kiwi but if you go to that viewpoint you see the ocean you see like one part which looks jungly so like a jungle and behind you see those glaciers so you see snow behind this was seriously one of our favorite spots in New Zealand if you sleep over here and go to the glaciers the next day you can stop and do both glaciers on one day so you have short hikes you park you walk to the glaciers. So if you're coming from the north, you start with Franz Joseph Glacier. You do this glacier, you walk back and you go to the next glacier, which is called Fox Glacier. One thing you need to know about those two glaciers. I think they were looking stunning a couple of years ago, but because of climate change, 
in climate change. When we were there, there wasn't that much snow or ice anymore. So we walked there and we could see like some ice on the very, very highest part of the glacier. But you could see that a lot of ice was already melted. I think if you do a helicopter tour, you will see great spots. But these helicopter tours are quite expensive. So the next stop after the glaciers would be Lake Vanaka. It's a huge lake. You can do some skydiving over here, but we were just chilling out, relaxing. One tip, if you go from the glaciers to Lake Vanaka, it's a road. You won't find many gas stations on the way. And as far as I remember, there was only one gas station. And of course, getting gas at this gas station was quite expensive. After Lake Monaka, we went to Queenstown. Queenstown is one of the, I mean, most adventurous places in New Zealand. This is where you do all this crazy shit. We went skydiving in Queenstown and it's still one of the greatest things we have done so far. And there is this burger place called Berg Burger and this was one of the greatest veggie burgers we had. I think the veggie burger was fried tofu and peanut sauce. Ugh. So now you're not like in the center center of the South Island, but like basically in the middle and you have to decide where to go next. Depending on the time you got, you have to choose. But of course there is Milford Sound, one of the most recommended places of New Zealand, which is further south. It's only like a one way road. So it's one way going to Milford Sound and then you go back. The very first time I went to New Zealand, I been to Milford Sound and I loved it. But the second time we traveled around the South Island, we didn't have enough time so we skipped that part but there is another sound a friend of us recommended us and this place is called doubtful sound which is almost like Milford sound but not as touristy not so many boats are going but you have less people as well so on our second trip to New Zealand instead of going to Milford sound we went to a city called Dunedin which is like a student city it's good it's nice there's a peninsula you should visit and here you can see like those giant sea lions we haven't seen them before you have this bird called albatross which is like a freaking huge seagull huge where the hell is this bird coming from and then you can see penguins there's like a penguin viewpoint on this peninsula so i think there are two more highlights of the south islands and both are must sees and must do's if you're on the south island first of all it's mount cook there's a campsite just next to the track which takes you to mount cook and if you do this track it's awesome one of the great greatest tracks we have done on the South Island. If you're at Mount Cook, you can just drive further to a lake which is called Lake Tikapo or Tikapo. And this lake also looks amazing. I mean, all those lakes close to the Mount Cook area, the water is turquoise. So the color of these lakes looks unreal. And then when you're on the way back to Christchurch, there's also a peninsula close to Christchurch where you can camp. And this peninsula is called Akaroa. And here you can go swimming with dolphins. Unfortunately, when we went there, the swimming with dolphins was canceled as the weather was really, really bad when we arrived. But I think that you definitely should go swimming with the dolphins over here if you consider to go swimming with dolphins. So that's the South Island of New Zealand let's talk about the North Island of New Zealand basically there are two cities where you can start your trip Auckland or Wellington we started in Wellington so in the south of the North Island Wellington is like the Berlin of New Zealand it's a great city we flew from Christchurch to Wellington and we rented a car over here as we didn't want to take our camper van from the south to the North Island as this is really really expensive not only the ferry ticket for the car is expensive also shipping the car back to the South Island is expensive as well. So we rented a new car in Wellington. But before you start your tour, you should check out the museum Tapapa. From Wellington, we drove north to a town which is called Turangi. In Turangi, we bought tickets for the Tonga Riro crossing. If you want to know more about eyesight, so these are information centers you can find all over New Zealand. Click on this video over here. So Tonga Riro crossing was our highlight of the North Island. Just for you to understand how you do the Tonga Riro crossing, there are two ways. If you have your own car, you drive to a spot which will be the ending point of the Tonga Riro crossing. At the end of the track, there will be a bus where you bought the ticket for this bus takes you to the starting point of the track so you do the 
Tonga River Alpine Crossing. You cross the mountain or the Alpine and at the end you arrive at your car. There's also a way to buy a ticket where a bus drives you to the starting point and picks you up at the ending point. So the next great stop would be Lake Taupo. The whole area around Lake Taupo is like a thermal area where you have all these thermal activities. There are some hot spots. So there's a river where you have hot water spots inside of the river, which feels like a hot tub. So you need to check that out. Also check out the Hookah Falls, which look amazing. And you should also go to a place which is called Craters of the Moon, where you have all these steam and smoke and thermal stuff coming out of the ground. The next highlight would be Rotorua, which is very, 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 very touristy and there are some thermal parks as well where you can see geysers and stuff like this which is nice but as I said very 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 touristy so many 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 people walking around this area which doesn't feel right somehow we went to this park which is called Waiyo Tapu Thermal Wonderland and our tip is go there early in the morning and try to check out the greatest spots where not many tourists are there another great spot where you can stop later on is Cathedral Cove which is similar to Fevel Spit where you see the arches. Here it looks more like a cathedral. Then there's Hot Water Beach, a place a friend of us recommended us. What you do here, you get like a shovel or spade and you go to the beach and you dig a hole and hot water is coming out of the ground. So you can dig a hole which is filling up with hot water, thermal water, where you can sit down and enjoy the hot tub. What we didn't really like about that place was that there were so many tourists again and you couldn't really find an empty spot. Goat Island was one of our next highlights where you can do some snorkeling you see great fish over here the snorkeling is nice the water is cold you should also definitely check out Kaiviti Caves on the way north in this cave you can see some glow worms there are several places all around New Zealand where you can see glow worms but you should definitely look out for one place like this we went further north to a place which is called Paihia here we did our dolphin cruise they told us we were able to swim with the dolphins but at the end we couldn't and swim with them this was a pity the cruise was nice though so we went further north but we missed out on the very northern part of the north island there are some long desert like beaches again where you can drive around we just didn't have enough time and i think maybe it looks similar to the north of the south island and we saw some desert like beaches in australia or vietnam so i think for us it was okay to skip it but if you drive south on the west side of the North Island you need to stop at a forest which is called Waipoa Forest this is the place where you can see the biggest kauri trees of New Zealand and this is a must see the kauri trees are just huge we went back to Auckland we enjoyed Auckland from here we went to a small island which is called Waihiki Island we did some woofing over here stayed here for a week in total we spent a little bit more than one and a half months in New Zealand New Zealand is awesome it's an awesome country we will definitely visit again two more tips for the North Island of course there's Hobbiton which is the movie set of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings the movies are great but the film set is man-made so you decide if you want to check that out and then there are some places where you can do black water rafting and we read some really good stuff about this activity we haven't done I hope this video helped you somehow and gave you some input where you should stop if you travel around New Zealand check out out this video if you plan a long trip around New Zealand and if you want to travel on a budget. I summarized some tips over here and please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more travel tips. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Lars and this is my channel HowTube.